Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday. So this week we're going to be doing a modification that I have wanted to do for a really long time, and that is Woozle's GBA Consolizer mod. You guys might have heard about this before. It's basically a mod that takes a GBA and connects it up to this little FPGA board here and allows you to output um, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games in 720p on a modern display. So it's really nice. It's got a ton of features. Um, and it's perfect for Game Boys like this one here, which as you guys can see in the camera, it's pretty beat up. It does work, um, but it's missing its shoulder buttons, and so, you know, it's just generally a really good candidate to, to fit into this. All right, so let's go through this step by step. Okay, so I've gone ahead and removed the GBA from the shell, and you can see that it's in pretty good condition. And um, I did test it and verified that it works beforehand, and I strongly recommend that you do this before you start doing this modification, it's pretty common and it makes sense to pick GBAs that are, you know, kind of in beat up shells or might have some kind of issues. Like I said, this one clearly doesn't have L and R buttons. These have been damaged. Um, but other than that, this console is clean and it works. So, you know, there are some that you'll find which are like completely covered in battery acid where there's like clearly lots of components that are coated in it and damaged. Those are not good candidates for this kind of mod because you don't know if something's broken and, um, you know, you might clean off the battery acid, um, but you may miss something and if it eats away at a critical trace, then, you know, you're going to be in trouble. So just choose wisely when you pick a GBA for this. So the first thing we've got to do is make a couple of modifications to the motherboard and, you know, remove a few components and make a couple of changes to it and just prepare it for the mod itself. So let's get started. We're going to pull out this speaker here. We've got to do the power switch. And you can remove these in a more destructive way, but I'm going to actually do this a little bit more carefully because I want to reuse this uh, potentially. Sometimes you'll find GBAs that have just bad power switches. So this one totally works fine. I'm going to keep it so that if I come across another GBA that needs to be repaired, I can just use this part. So let's move in and take a closer look. All right, so to remove this thing, in a non-destructive way, I'm going to use Chipquick, which is a low temperature solder for surface mount components. And you just start by applying this flux to the areas you want to work on. That should be enough. Now I'm going to go ahead and add the Chipquick. There we go. I'll clean this up off camera and I'm going to save that for future use. Now let's just get some desoldering braid and clean up the mess. And again, you guys don't have to do it this way, but because I want to reuse that switch, this is why I'm doing it. Okay, all done. I'll get some alcohol to clean this all up. And then what we're gonna do next is we're going to get some solder and a little piece of wire and we're gonna bridge these two points together. All right, so the next thing we've gotta do is bypass the volume wheel over here. And to do that, we just need to solder a wire to bridge all three of these pads together. So I've just got this Kynar wire that I used on the power switch, same stuff. And I can test continuity with my multimeter just to make sure, but I'm pretty sure that looks good and everything is all bridged. So now let's turn the motherboard over and we're gonna work on the other side. All right, so the next thing we're gonna be doing is removing this crystal oscillator over here. And as per the official guide, you're supposed to like literally twist this thing off side to side. So I guess it's kind of like a surface mount capacitor. So I'm not going up and down, I'm just twisting and I can feel the legs breaking. Almost all of them are broken now. But you can see I'm just going side to side, not up and down. And that actually was pretty easy. <laughs> kind of expected it to be more of a pain. Okay. 
So we've got to also get rid of these battery terminals. This is something that will require a decent amount of heat. You need a pair of pliers to hold this down. Otherwise, be prepared to burn yourself. <laughs> so you gotta give this a decent amount of heat and time with your iron. You might even want to turn your iron up. Mine is at 750 Fahrenheit, but I might even, let's see how it goes. So with my right hand here, I'm twisting counterclockwise and you can hear it coming free. Okay, one down, one to go. Yeah, you just gotta be careful. If you go anywhere near these things when you're doing that, you will burn yourself. All right, there's just a little bit more left to do. All right, so now we just gotta get rid of this little surface mount resistor here, R5. That's very easy to do. You just make sure that your iron has some solder on it, and then you just swipe downward like I did there, and it comes right off. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and get started with the flex cable installation. Okay, so first thing you've gotta do is just align the flex cable like you see I'm doing here. You can do that with your hands or with a pair of forceps. Um, it really, really helps to have magnification. And then you should have your iron totally clean, um, like mine is right here. And then you just use the existing solder on the pads just to tack down um, everything in place. And that's what you're seeing me do here on both sides. And then once everything's tacked into place, you can add a very tiny droplet of solder onto your tip. And then you can just make these sweeping motions up and down each pin. Um, you should also definitely use a generous amount of flux just to make sure that you don't bridge stuff. Um, and also if you do, you can actually use the flux to help get that uh, bridge removed. Um, and so then, yeah, once that's done, just make sure you go over your work. You can see I made a little bridge over here, but then with some extra flux, I cleaned it off. All right, so now that the worst part is all set, now let's go ahead and just finish up the last little bits of soldering. So we need to connect up a 3.3 volt wire going to the battery terminal here and ground going to this point over here. Let's go ahead and take care of that. All right, so now we're gonna take this Super Nintendo port and we're gonna solder it into the main GBA consoleizer board. So this is of course how you're gonna connect up with your GBA and play games. Um, and so the way to do this correctly is to actually insert it into the 3D printed part. The reason why is because as you can see, this thing you know can go in any angle. So you want it to make sure that it actually is in the correct angle when you, uh, when you solder into place. So you basically just line this up and get it you know, into the groove and then slide the PCB into this little notch that's in the center over here. And now everything is in a pretty good spot and you can go ahead and solder these guys into place. All right, so this is the last little bit of soldering we need to do. So we're gonna go ahead and install this LED and switch into this little daughter board here. Um, the longer lead of an LED is the positive, and you can see the positive is marked on this PCB. So we're just going to go in here. This is just a standard red LED. And I'm just going to splay these out a bit so that it stays in place. And let's go ahead and solder that. Last thing we got to do is solder three wires from the power switch over to the consoleizer. And this is just a standard single pole switch, which means that you're going from bridging these two points to these two points, like that. So you just gotta wire up, connect up three wires here, and then just make sure they stay the same from these pads over to here. But even if you switch these two, it really doesn't matter as much. It's really the fact that the middle has to go to the middle over here. All 
All right, so now we're gonna start assembling this thing. I've got a 32 pin version of the GBA, so I'm gonna be using this custom flex cable that was designed by Woozle. So it goes from 32 to 40 pin. So you put this part in with the contacts facing up towards you, like you can see here. I'm just gonna bring these bales down with my fingernail. There we go. On the other side, we're gonna lift this latch up and then bring this into the 40 pin side and we're good to go. Okay, so to get this other cable in, you have the GBA facing like this with the, um, the cartridge slot facing upward and then you're gonna rotate this so that it goes in with the black contact facing down. Hopefully this is visible on, nope, it's not. Hang on, let me try another way. All right. Okay, hopefully that's visible. And you can see that it's in like this with the black facing down like that. Okay, so now we're revisiting this 3D printed part and we're gonna be connecting both of these boards into here. So the bottom is straightforward. We're just gonna bring it right back in the way we did earlier. Let me see if I can do this in a easier way. And now I'm gonna flip it onto its side like this. And the GBA is gonna line up right about here. All right, so the next thing we we're gonna do is just take this back plate and we're gonna put it in with this piece facing up. And it just slides right in to the micro USB and the HDMI port, just like that. The power switch is next, and you can see there's like a little like slot right over here for it. So this just kind of slides right in, just like that. All right, so this is probably the most challenging part of the assembly. So now we're gonna take everything and put it together. So I'm holding on to the uh, I'm holding on to the top here so that it stays in place. And then there's like a lip you have to bypass first. And then over here there's like some slots. I'm not sure if it's showing up on camera very well, but there are some slots for this plastic piece and you've got to make sure that these guys are lined up as you descend so that it goes in properly. And it's a very tight fit as you can no doubt see and hear. All right, there we go. You wanna be careful with the volume wheel and with the headphone jack too, so that they don't get beat up on their way in. And there we go, finally. Okay, that is a very tight fit. Oh, not quite there. There we go. So yeah, that's a really tight fit. And you should take your time and just be slow and careful and patient about the whole thing. But once you get it there, it'll be okay. All right, so final steps here are to take this really cool power button. I'm just gonna tack it right there onto the power switch. And then the shell is just gonna snap right in over here, which I might hold off on doing because I haven't tested this yet. And I wanna make sure everything is working before I really commit. So let's go ahead and do a quick test. All right, so I've got the consoleizer sitting right here. I decided to put the lid on top anyway because it's fairly straightforward to take it off and put it back on. Um, and I have a copy of Minish Cap in there. And then for power, I'm using a five volt, volt um, cell phone charger brick on the bottom there. And then I've got my mini HDMI to regular HDMI going into the TV. So now let's see what happens. All right, looking beautiful. Man, that looks really good. Um, all right, as you can no doubt tell, there's no sound. And I'm not surprised by that. 
uh, that's actually something that we've got to turn on. So what you got to do is take your Super Nintendo controller and then just hit down and select. That opens up the menu for the consoleizer. And I'm not going to go into all of these features. This is really more about how to install one of these than about all of the features. And there are other videos um, out there that describe this. But if you install this and you hear no sound, it's totally fine. It's normal. So I'm just going to hit A and go into system and I'm going to turn DVI plus on and that should give us sound. Oh, right, this is a section of the of the game with no sound. Here we go. Yeah, so now you can hear we've got sound, no issues. Um, I'll just briefly go into some of the options with picture. There's quite a lot you can do. You can smooth the image, which does change how it looks. Um, and arguably might make it look better, but I personally kind of like the sharp pixels. That's generally what I want to do. Um, you can change your zoom to a 5x, which fills up the whole screen, which is really nice, although you do lose a little bit of information on the top, as you can see there. Uh, that might depend on your display as well. Um, you can change your color palette, so you can make it uh, a little bit more muted, depending on what kind of uh, look you want to have. Personally, I think it looks really nice with the color adjustments off. Um, you can also dial in gamma, and you can also change color palettes as well. So again, this is just a very quick superficial overview of the settings. I am going to go ahead and hit save though, so that it retains the information that the DVI will stay on all the time. So, so yeah, that's it for this video. Um, Overall, I would say this is a pretty fun kind of installation. It's intermediate difficulty. It's about the same as like doing a DC digital or a PS1 digital in terms of just getting that flex cable soldered on. The results are really outstanding. Um, this is like probably the best way to play Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and GBA on a flat panel display. The only downside I have to say is just the very long lead times it takes to get one of these. Like you can pre-order them pretty easily, but then expect to wait somewhere between nine months to a year to get one. And, um, you know, that's how it's always been, even pre-pandemic. So, you know, as long as you're patient and you know that it's coming, you can uh, eventually get it and you'll have a really nice experience. All right, guys. So thanks again for watching and uh, I will see you guys next time.